<laughs> we are back on Taking Care of Business on Current Radio, News Talk 1180. Our guest by phone, Mark Titus, author of Don't Put Me In, Coach, My Incredible NCAA Journey from the End of the Bench to the End of the Bench. Mark, uh, your title, I, I read someplace how you came up with that title. You want to tell that story? That's a great story. <laughs> yeah, the title came from, it's a true story, um, we were playing an exhibition game. It wasn't a real game, so uh, I didn't feel quite as bad. But I just, I'd had a stomach ache all day leading up to this practice game, and uh, I was feeling a little bit uncomfortable sitting on the bench. And we were playing – the team we were playing wasn't very good, and our, our team blew them out, and we were up by like 50 points with three minutes left. And typically in those situations, you know, the coach uh, – throws a bone to his walk-ons and lets us get out there and have a little bit of fun and play. Um, and, you know, walk-ons, we never really get a chance to play that much, so we always are excited to play. But this particular day, I was, uh, wasn't was feeling too great. I just, kind of just wanted to sit on the bench and, and not play. So he comes down with three minutes left to the end of the bench, and he's like, are you ready to get in there? Are you guys ready to get in there? And, and he, it's like a rhetorical question because I'm just supposed to say yeah and, and jump up and go. And I said, actually, Coach, I'm good right here. I don't want to play today. <laughs> And he looks at me, he's like, are you serious? And I said, I said yeah, I mean, I got a stomach ache. We're winning by 50. I don't, I mean, I've you been don't playing need for me. three years. I've done some stuff on the court already. Like, I don't really need, what? I don't need to go out there and prove myself or anything. I'm good. And he just started laughing. It was like, all right, well, went back to the other end of the bitch and sat down. So, so that's how you got the title of the book. Yeah, that's it. That's great. And give us your website. Yeah, the website is uh, I write for now. It's called Grantland.com. It's an ESPN um, finance site. It's got the ESPN brand. Um, but it's just all a bunch of writers. Uh, I'm the less serious writer of the group, but there are a lot of You're great kidding pieces me. on there about <laughs> a lot of different things. Yeah, I'm the less serious. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm writing college basketball on there. It's a lot of fun. I, I, I get paid to watch a bunch of college basketball and give my opinion, which is something I've done my entire life, and, and now I'm just getting paid for it. So it's a good gig. All right, so you can give us an opinion. Where's Ohio State going to go this year in the NCAA Ma- oh, March geez. Madness? I don't know. I mean, like, p- trying to predict the NCAA tournament, it's, it's impossible. But uh, I will say that they got a good team. Um, they kind of underachieved a little bit this year from what people were expecting. But they're, they're kind of on the upswing, you know. They, they, they closed the regular season pretty, pretty well and uh, maybe building a little bit of momentum heading into the tournament. So I, I could see them going to the Final Four. I mean, they certainly have the talent that wouldn't shock me, but – I think North Carolina is the team to beat. Kentucky is a sixteen and zero. Yeah, Kentucky's sixteen and zero in the SEC and and has been number one for most of the year, and everyone's high on them. But North Carolina, I think, is going to end up winning because Kentucky, because the way it always works is the teams that you think are going to win don't, right? And that how it always every time you fill out your bracket, you're like, oh, Kentucky definitely they have to win. They're the best team by far, and then they they lose in the second round or something. So I'm going with North Carolina, I think, in my brackets because. They have a ton of talent this year. They just kind of seem disinterested at times because they got a bunch of veterans, kind of like me, like at Ohio State, where it was just like I've been around the block before. I don't really need to get excited about this. But uh, now I think they're now I think they're uh, going to get excited and start playing a little bit harder. And, and then all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a prediction that this will be the year that a 16 seed is going to take out a one. That's Whoa. a bold prediction. I hope well, you're not putting money on that. No, well, if I was, I'd make a lot of money, wouldn't I? <laughs> well, if it happened, you'd make a lot of money. If it didn't, you'd... <laughs> well, it's never happened, but there's so much parity in basketball now. Yeah, there is. It is. That's what makes it great. I mean, it's yeah. a terrible... When I was playing, I hated the tournament because it's a terrible way of determining who the best team is, you know? Like, it's... Because anybody can beat anybody, but... Like, if 16 seed beats Kentucky, that doesn't necessarily mean they're a better team. It just means, like, some things happened and, you know just the way the breaks went that particular day. but So from that standpoint, I hate it as a player, but as a fan, it's so entertaining because you have no idea what's going to happen. You yeah. know, basketball wasn't your only sport. I understand you were in diving for a while. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Synchronized <laughs> swimming, actually, I think it was. Uh, There's one yeah, on was... YouTube I've seen. <laughs> yeah, we saw that one on YouTube, and I saw a picture in your book with your nice oh, the... bathing suit. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a fan of the Speedo. I don't know. I, I was told from an early age, if you've got it, flaunt it. And so I've, I've abided by that rule for most of my life. <laughs> Speaking of your athletic prowess, <laughs> tell us about your NBA career. <laughs> yeah, um, I was uh, not drafted, so that's pretty much the story. <laughs> but but you, I, I read someplace you were asked to take your name out of the draft. <laughs> yeah, I did. I uh, After my junior season, I um, anybody... Uh, 
Well, you, you hear a lot about the, the kids who leave early, like like we were talking about earlier with uh, my teammates who they were chanting one more year for. They left college early. They still had eligibility. Well, after my junior season, I had one more year of eligibility left, and a couple of my teammates um, – had declared for the NBA draft again, and one of them as one of them said I should do it too as a joke, because once you declare for the NBA draft, as long as you don't hire an agent, you can still pull your name back out and then go back to college and and resume your career like nothing happened. So I decided to just do that, and I, I approached our coaches and I was like, "How do I submit my name?" And they're like, "Are you serious?" And I was like, "Of course I'm serious. I want to submit my name for the draft." So they gave me like these papers to fill out, and uh, we faxed them to the NBA, and then. A week later, um, one of the coaches approaches me while I was working out, and he walks right up to me like in the middle of a drill and shoves these papers in my face and says, the NBA is not happy that you're making a mockery of their draft. You need to sign these now and get your name out of the draft right now because they're not happy with us and all that kind of thing. I I couldn't help but have a little smile on my face as I signed my name. Oh, that's great. Oh, that's great. Our guest by phone is Mark Titus, author of Don't Put Me In, Coach. i got to read this last quote because I thought it was hilarious. By Greg Oden, the number one overall pick, I guess, who you played with since high school, I guess. Yeah. Uh, Mark Titus knows a lot of personal secrets of mine. If he revealed any of them in this book, I will kick him right in the blank. <laughs> I'm not joking. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know... Um, you played at Ohio State, or you rode the bench at Ohio State. But <laughs> yeah, I practiced at Ohio State. Whatever Ohio you State. did at Ohio State. Did you ever consider that you might have had more fun at a maybe a D2 school or an NAI school where you could have been a starter and maybe been a big shot? Yeah, I mean, I thought about that all the time. Um, but, I mean, in the end, it's worked out well. Like, looking back, there's no way I could have possibly had any more fun than what I did. But um, in, in the moment, like when I'm sitting on the bench and I, you know, I see players that I played against in high school, like, playing at other schools and getting a lot of playing time and all that sort of thing. It was a little bit discouraging, and I thought, you know, it would be fun to do that. But then, I don't know, I, I, I just learned to appreciate what I had instead of thinking about what I didn't have. And, you know, my, my dream my entire life was to play Big Ten basketball. And even though I wasn't playing as much as what I had uh, maybe wanted to, I was still a- accomplishing that dream. And I was still, you know, in a great situation. So uh, I just tried to make be as positive as I possibly could with it. You know, Mark, it's uh, uh, looking at one of your videos on YouTube, Mr. Rainmaker, you had over 200,000 yeah. hits on that thing. And, and I was watching it. You've got a pretty good three-point shot. you got a That's really, about it. Yeah, that's yeah. all I got. That's... Yeah, you got a sweet outside shot. That one you hit, th- there was one they were showing, I guess you were standing in the upper deck and threw yeah. it and made it. Was that a, a legitimate shot? That was legitimate. That was actually only the second um, attempt. Like when I, if you watch the video, you can see the first attempt. The ball is bouncing because uh-huh. um, I missed, and then the, the second attempt uh, was the one that went in. And, and people think it's fake all the time, but like we didn't even plan it. I was, we were on our way. We were we had started upstairs, and we were walking downstairs to actually start filming the video. And as we were walking down the stairs, I was like, "Turn on the camera and see if I can throw one of these in." And I had two balls with me, so if I missed the second one, then we were just gonna not film it or not try it again. And the second one went in, so yeah, that was pretty. That was a pretty proud. That was, that was one of the uh, best accomplishments in my basketball career. <laughs> <laughs> well, but that was a great baseball shot. throw from the stands. Yeah, that, that was one. an up, upper deck shot. That was fantastic. Yeah. You also, uh, I, I'm looking at your book right now, and there's it says Club Trill, and the Wisconsin fans are holding up a sign. So you have fans throughout the Big Ten. Yeah, that was the weirdest thing about um, my career was that I got warm welcomes pretty much everywhere I went which because I was non-threatening to the other teams like <laughs> if you're a Wisconsin fan there's no reason to hate me because I'm not going to go out on the court and do anything about it to your team you know so um so yeah it's not like I'm beating your team so people people at all the other Big Ten schools like seem to really like me and, and actually at Minnesota my senior season we played at Minnesota and we were beating Minnesota by um like 20 points towards the end of the game. And there's like two minutes left, and Minnesota's student section actually started a We Want Titus chant, <laughs> which was like the weirdest thing. I, I looked at him like, are you serious? Like, I'm getting a We Want Titus chant on the road? Because, you know, usually it's just the home crowd that, that does that. But it was pretty crazy. <laughs> we got about a minute left. Tell us about Club Trillion, and then uh, people can get your book anywhere, right? <laughs> yeah, the book's available anywhere. Um, it's available in ebook, audiobook. book uh, I don't know, just wherever books are sold, but... 
Oh, um, it, yeah. it is on audiobook. I didn't realize that. Okay, good. I'll 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 finish it on audiobook. It's a funny book. I highly recommend it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, but Club Trillion, uh, the, the concept of Club Trillion was that I played one minute and I had a bunch of zeros in my box score because the, <laughs> I didn't have enough time to do anything when I was on out on the court. So uh, we called that one followed by twelve zeros in the box score a trillion. So. <laughs> Me and my teammates that uh, were all on the end of the bench, we we formed this club called Club Trillion, and uh, that's where that name comes from. <laughs> hey, Mark, thank you so much for the time. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me. Okay, and we'll we'll be talking to you again. Okay. Best of luck, okay, Mark. Best good. of luck. <laughs> we'll be back yeah. in 167 hours on Taking Care of Business on Current Radio News Talk 1180.